Is it time to plant? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm News 8 Digital Anchor Luke Laster here from the Wood TV Live Desk. Joining me this morning is author, host, plant enthusiast, Rick Weiss, to share more on if it is time to plant. Rick, good morning. Hey, good morning, Luke. Rick, let's start with your background here a little bit so viewers have an idea of your background and what you do, where you came from. If you could share a little bit on your experience in gardening. Well, 46 years, Luke, uh, in the garden industry, so I have a real frame of uh, reference as far as plant material is concerned, uh, 46 years with Flowerland, and uh, have done the Flowerland show on Wood Radio for 30 years now, uh, answering uh, folks' questions and helping them with their gardening. So it's given me uh, a number of years to... Uh, experience gardening in West Michigan. So a lot to dive into here. The first thing, you know, I want to step into is Mother's Day is this weekend. Um, a, a common activity, you know, I know I have friends, family who did it growing up is to garden with mom, if the weather's good, of course. Um, is this weekend generally a good rule of thumb? Is this a good time to start planting? Well, generally as a rule of thumb, it is. Of course, we know here in West Michigan, you never know what the weather's going to bring along. However, uh, on my radio show, I generally tell people that I use May 10th as the, uh, as the last frost date here in West Michigan. No guarantees, <laughs> but May 10th usually as the last frost date. And what we're seeing outside is uh, dandelions now finally blooming. That means the soil temperatures have warmed to that 60 degree plus threshold and the air temperatures are finally warming up. We're seeing that all over West Michigan today also with the, uh, the ubiquitous white blooming trees everywhere. Those are blooming pears uh, or ornamental pears and we're seeing them in bloom right now. So yes, it is time to plant certainly uh, containers, that sort of thing, but even ground planting because it doesn't look like there's frost in the forecast in the foreseeable future. I guess not to get too, too specific, but anything before May 10th or anything after May 10th when it comes to, I guess, a specific uh, uh, plant or crop that is better to plant, again, maybe late April or early June, Sure. Well, we've been doing a lot of planting prior to this point. For example, peas can be put in the ground in the garden or trees or other ornamental hardy plants. So when we talk about that last frost date, we're generally talking about the tender annuals that we love to plant at this time of the year. For example, uh, flowering annuals like zinnias or begonias or petunias. Uh, those are the plants where we have to watch for frost. And uh, again, at this point, it doesn't look like there's, there's frost from here on out in the forecast, keeping my fingers crossed. Same thing with vegetable plants, uh, cucumbers, any of your cucurbits, your melons, watermelon, cucumbers, uh, very sensitive to frost, tomato plants. Uh, and so we have to kind of watch the weather initially. Now, everybody's trying to get a jump on the season, and uh, it looks like this weekend will be the big kickoff. I mean, absolutely gorgeous forecast ahead, too, to boot with that. Yep. Um, so one thing we saw, we saw an increase in interest throughout the pandemic and, and lockdowns. Gardening was something that just saw a real uptick because it was outdoor activities. Is that a trend that you're still seeing continue here uh, a couple years down the line now? Absolutely. I believe that the COVID pandemic brought on a lot of new gardeners, people with interest in gardening, and uh, that will continue moving forward. People recognize the, uh, the exercise, the fresh air, the benefit of growing plants and uh, vegetables in your own backyard, uh, and also the enjoyment of wildlife, whether it be pollinators, hummingbirds, monarch butterflies, which are attracted to our yards in summer, uh, based on what we plant in spring, whether they be salvias or cleome or, or some verbenas, whatever uh, uh, flowers we put in the ground, uh, are going to attract those pollinators or hummingbirds to our backyard. And, and being able to, uh, to utilize your yard, your backyard, your deck, your porch area, 
as an extension of the home and outdoor living area, uh, there's tremendous benefit to us all. Along those same lines of the increased interest, uh, inflation is causing higher co uh, causing higher costs on produce kind of just across the board here. Are we seeing an increased interest for that reason? Well, absolutely, Luke. And uh, again, when you have success, for example, growing a tomato plant, <laughs> and we always joke, we say that uh, a tomato plant is the gateway drug to gardening. In other words, if you, if you haven't been a gardener to this point, you plant a tomato, you have success, you enjoy those tomatoes uh, during summer and are able to enjoy, uh, let's say, a, a BLT or, or enjoy them on a salad. Um, then you're going to want to venture out and try other plant material. And uh, why not? Uh, because again, with food prices going up, with inflation, uh, being able to grow some of these plants in your own backyard, herbs, the tremendous interest in herbs, whether it be basil or oregano or growing garlic, uh, again, not that difficult to do. If you have a good sunny spot, you pay attention to the soil, you have a water source, uh, you can do it. And that's what people are finding out is that it's not rocket science. Uh, sure, there are, there are things you have to pay attention to, but it's not rocket science. You can do that. Um, I wrote in, in my first book, uh, you know, to get out there and, and get your hands in the dirt and give it a try, because if you haven't killed any plants, you're not trying hard enough. And I think that that's the approach people are taking also is that, you know, I can do this and this has tremendous benefit for me. Uh, I'm going to start gardening. Like any industry, we see fads, seasonal fads across the board. Are there any trends this season, though, that are really uh, gaining some traction and we'll find to be long-term beneficial here as we head into kind of 2022 here in West Michigan for gardening? Well, one of the hot trends, of course, is container gardening. Uh, and container gardening is great because as opposed to putting plants in the ground, you have control over the environment. You have control over the soil. Uh, the soil warms quicker in a container than ground soil does. And uh, the sky's the limit as far as variety is concerned. So container gardening, vegetable and herb gardening. And then in addition to that, as I said, I've been in the industry for 46 years. You take, for example, uh, proven winter's plants. Uh, the, the performance of these plants that plant breeders have developed over the years uh, unbelievable. Take just as a simple example, a petunia. Years ago, we always had to do something we called deadhead petunias, pluck off the old spent blossoms. Today, these plants just bloom their heads off without having to deadhead, making gardening more enjoyable, rewarding, and uh, virtually ensuring the fact uh, that your plants are going to perform well for you. And that is certainly a trend we see. Uh, another plant would be, for example, hydrangeas. People love hydrangeas, but many people struggle uh, with getting them to bloom. It's one of the number one questions on my show. Again, the new varieties that are available today perform so much better in the landscape that if an individual decides to take up gardening and they have success, odds are they're going to continue to garden and expand their palette of, uh, of plants in their yard and on their deck. You mentioned tomatoes being the gateway plant to other sources of gardening and other sources of planting. What would you tell that individual who maybe just successfully grew a tomato plant and is looking to expand after that? I think the key, Luke, is a few things. Number one, it's not just Mother's Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend. Gardening is a year-round activity. That's the first point. In other words, uh, if you want to be a good gardener, you pay attention to your yard and garden in fall. That's when a lot of important elements take place in the garden. Uh, so that's one thing to, uh, to bear in mind. Um, also, soil preparation, super important. You need a good foundation. We look down first before we look up. Uh, that is a key uh, and then uh, also, Luke, I would recommend that you start in bite-sized pieces. 
Uh, if you get overly zealous and summer comes along and it gets hot and the weeds start to grow, you may become a little bit disappointed. So if you're just starting out, I would recommend doing so in bite-sized pieces. Get a few victories first uh, and then uh, build from there. Uh, after a while, it'll get in your blood. You'll be addicted to it like the rest of us. And uh, again, you'll con continue to expand your garden, your containers, your plantings out on your deck or in your yard, your backyard, your front yard. Rick, anything else that you'd like to add or just put out um, there? For me, I've been amazed at the explosion in interest in gardening uh, over the past couple of years and with COVID. And I'd have to say, I never, uh, I never saw it. Uh, I never saw it coming. Uh, there's a, there's a great proverb that I, uh, that I often tell people and uh, it's an ancient proverb. And it says uh, that when you eat a piece of fruit, remember the person who planted the tree. And I think that that is a great uh, a great proverb because there are many people who have come before us with an interest in gardening and now we're adding all these individuals uh, who are developing an interest in gardening and we have an opportunity to mentor them to inspire them uh, and that's certainly what I hope to do and what we hope to do moving forward because uh, when it comes to gardening it doesn't matter what your age is the culture your your ethnic background uh, it does not matter. Everybody loves flowers and plants, and we certainly all need to eat. Uh, so gardening is the perfect natural activity for anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, if you tuned in maybe halfway through this stream or just now clicking in, there's a link attached to this. If you're watching here on Facebook, it takes you over to woodtv.com. You're able to watch our full conversation there. Rick Weiss, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm News 8 Digital anchor Luke Laster. Have a great weekend and happy Mother's Day to you.